So if you're looking for a soundbar for your TV, then Bose's soundbars are always a great option to consider, especially if you're looking for something with a brighter sound signature and if you're looking for a fully self-contained system. So today we're going to break down Bose's current soundbar lineup as of early 2024. We have the brand new Bose Smart Ultra Soundbar, the Bose Smart Soundbar 600, which is the soundbar that I personally use in my bedroom. And we also have the entry-level Bose TV speaker. Now when it comes to pricing, the Bose TV speaker has a retail price of $280, the 600 has a retail price of $500, and the Ultra has a retail price of $900. Now in this video, we're only going to be focusing on the soundbars themselves, but with both the 600 and the Ultra, you can always build the soundbars out by adding an external subwoofer, and with both the 600 and the Ultra, you can actually add two external subwoofers for double the bass and or or you can also add rear satellite speakers. Whereas with the Bose TV speaker, you can only add one external subwoofer. But nonetheless, I do feel that both the 600 and the Ultra are perfectly fine. And if you want to pick any of these soundbars up, they will be linked down below, or you can always press on the YouTube shopping button. And if you want to further support the channel, you can always pick up some merch. We actually have new hats, new shirts, and new hoodies. Right now, I'm actually wearing our new embroidered hoodie. We have an embroider here on the chest, and we also have a secondary border here on the sleeve. Now first let's talk about the design of these soundbars. Now all of these soundbars have a height of 2.2 inches and they all have a depth of 4.1 inches. However, the Bose TV speaker has the shortest length here coming in at 23.4 inches. The 600 has a length of 27.3 inches and then there's the Ultra which is noticeably longer coming in with a length of 41.1 inches. Overall, all of these soundbars have relatively small footprints but the Ultra can be a little more challenging to place in your setup. Now when it comes to materials, all of these soundbars have grills on the front and both the TV speaker and 600 are mostly made out of plastic. Now overall, the 600 does the best job here of simply disappearing when you're going to watch a movie because the 600 doesn't have any reflections and there's also no constantly on indicator light. Whereas with the Bose TV speaker, there is a constantly on indicator light on the front. So I do feel that this indicator light can be a little distracting. But then there's the Ultra, which does have its glass top. Now, its glass top is very elegant, but depending on your setup, in certain situations, it can cause a constant reflection, which can be a little distracting, in my opinion. So, personally, design-wise, the 600 is my favorite soundbar here because it just does the best job here of simply disappearing. However, something that all of these soundbars do have in common is that they all plug in via an AC port and none of them have an external power brick that you have to worry about hiding. And this is really good, especially if you plan on wall mounting any of these soundbars because it just makes wall mounting these soundbars a lot easier. However, none of these soundbars come included with a wall mounting kit in the box. That's sold separately. But now let's talk about the ports on these soundbars. Now all of these soundbars have a single HDMI port. Unfortunately, none of these soundbars have an HDMI in port. So with none of these soundbars, you can't plug in your Blu-ray player or a gaming console. Now the HDMI port on both the 600 and the Ultra have support for eARC and thanks to their upward firing drivers, both the 600 and Ultra have support for true Dolby Atmos. Whereas the Bose TV speaker only has a standard HDMI ARC port. Now both the 600 and the Ultra come included with an HDMI cable, whereas the Bose TV speaker, this soundbar only comes included with an optical cable, so you are going to have to supply your own HDMI cable here. The only major port difference between the Ultra and these other soundbars is that the Ultra has a built-in Ethernet port, but regardless, both the Ultra and the 600 have Wi-Fi support, and after both of these soundbars have been connected up to Wi-Fi, you can stream music to them with either AirPlay or Chrome and if you want, you can use either of these two soundbars as a smart speaker and either use a or a Google Assistant. Whereas with the Bose TV speaker, this soundbar does not have Wi-Fi, so there is no app, and if you want to adjust the EQ settings of the soundbar, you are going to have to use the included remote. Also, you cannot stream music to the Bose TV speaker through AirPlay or Chromecast. However, this soundbar does have Bluetooth, so there's that. Now, both the Ultra and the 600 also have Bluetooth, but being able to stream music to your soundbar over AirPlay or Chromecast is just a lot more 
more convenient. You're going to be able to sync multiple smart speakers together and get them to all play in sync. And you're also going to have a lot more range, granted, if you have a solid Wi-Fi setup. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. Now, when it comes to speaker setups, the Bose TV speaker has a single front mode firing tweeter, it has a dual front mode firing drivers, and it has a single bass chamber. But then there's the 600, which has a single front mode firing tweeter, and it has a total of four drivers, two of which can be found on the ends of the soundbar, and they shoot out at like a 45 degree angle, and the other two fire upwards. And the 600 has two bass chambers with exhaust ports that shoot out the back. But then there's the Ultra. The Ultra has a single front mode firing tweeter. It has four front mode firing drivers. We've got two bass chambers, just like the 600, except a little larger. And at the ends of this soundbar, there are upward firing drivers. But now we're gonna jump into the sound test. Now both the Ultra and the 600 are running at 75% volume, and they're both using the same EQ settings. And the Bose TV speaker is playing at max volume with its bass and voice modes turned on. And we're also going to be using the built-in speakers in the 2023 Sony Bravia X90 LTV, except that those speakers are also going to be running at max volume just so that they have a chance of keeping up.
So, like you may have just heard, obviously any soundbar is going to sound better than your TV's built-in speakers. Your TV most likely just has a pair of downward-firing speakers that bounce sound off of the table, they don't get all that loud, and when the bass really gets going, it can become a distorted mess. Now, the built-in speakers on the Sony X90L get decently loud, and distortion isn't a problem for them, like with some more affordable TVs out there, because the Sony X90L is considered to be more of an upper and mid-range TV. TV. But regardless, even with the Sony X90L, you're going to want to invest in a soundbar so that you can truly enjoy your movies. Now first, let's address the Bose TV speaker. Now yes, the Bose TV speaker is an upgrade over your TV's built-in speakers, but personally, I'm not very impressed by it. Now from a performance standpoint, the Bose TV speaker doesn't get nearly as loud as these other two soundbars, it doesn't have as much bass, and at those louder volumes, it does start to get a little distorted. Also, the instrument separation on this soundbar isn't all that great, so it does sound rather narrow. So in general, the Bose TV speaker just sounds louder but narrow. Overall, the Bose TV speaker gets the job done, but personally, I wouldn't be very satisfied by it. But now let's turn our attention to the big players here. Now thanks to the upward firing drivers found on both the 600 and the Ultra, both of these soundbars have a good sense of verticality to them, they both have a really good instrument separation, and they both have true Dolby Atmos support. And even if you're not watching Dolby Atmos content, both of these soundbars are still going to give you great immersiveness. Now personally, I feel that the 600 is going to have no problem filling a bedroom or medium sized living room with sound. It gets decently loud and it also produces a decent amount of bass. Now obviously the soundbar isn't going to create as much bass as an external subwoofer, but you're still going to be able to feel what's actually happening on the screen. But then there's the Ultra. The Ultra gets louder and has more bass than the 600, and the center channel on the Ultra is stronger because you have those four drivers shooting directly at you. Now personally, I feel that the 600 is a good default option, but if you just want more volume and more bass, you can always go for the Ultra. But the core performance difference between the 600 and the Ultra is just going to be volume and bass. These two soundbars have the same instrument separation and distortion isn't a problem at higher volumes. Because for comparison sake, going from the Bose TV speaker to the Bose Smart Soundbar 600, obviously you're going to get more volume and more bass. But with the 600, you're also going to get much better instrument separation and distortion isn't an issue at higher volumes. Whereas going from the 600 to the Ultra, the main difference is is just volume. Now, whether you decide to go with the 600 or the Ultra, personally, I do recommend that you go in and raise the center channel so that dialogue is more prominent. I also like to raise the bass so that you can better feel those action scenes. And I also like to raise the high channel on both of these soundbars so they can get more verticality out of them. But also, a minor difference between the Ultra and these other two soundbars is that the Ultra has support for AI voice optimization. Now, personally, I'm not very impressed by this whole AI voice optimization thing, but I do expect that Bose's future soundbars are going to have support for this feature as well. But in general, all of Bose's soundbars have a brighter sound signature to them, and they all do a very good job of emphasizing dialogue. Personally, I do not recommend that you pick up the Ultra over the 600, simply because of the Ultra's new AI voice optimization mode. If you want a brighter sound signature on the 600, you can always do that by simply emphasizing the center channel. However, one feature that the Ultra does have over the 600 and the Bose TV speaker is that it has adaptive IQ. So you can actually calibrate its sound for your sweet spot, and this is something that you can do through the app. But another feature that both the Ultra and the 600 have over the Bose TV speaker is that they both have simple sync. So you'll be able to connect your Bose headphones and speakers to either the Ultra or 600 and get them to play in sync. And this is specifically really good if you have have your content playing through your headphones because then this way you can watch TV or movies late at night without disturbing anybody else. 
Now, Bose's Simple Sync is supposed to work with Bose's headphones and speakers, but personally, I have been able to get some non Bose headphones and speakers to work with the 600. But to be safe, I do recommend that you, if you want to use this feature, you also have a pair of Bose headphones or Bose speakers. But also, with Simple Sync on both the 600 and Ultra, I have noticed that there is some latency when watching movies. So if you're someone as particular as me, you will know. But with all that being said, if you're trying to choose between any of Bose's soundbars, here is my breakdown. Now, with the Bose TV speaker, this soundbar gets the job done. But personally, I'm not very impressed by this soundbar because it doesn't get all that loud, it doesn't have the best instrument separation, it doesn't have all that much bass, and at those louder volumes, distortion can be a problem. The real question here is choosing between the 600 and the Ultra. Now personally, I feel that the Bose Smart Soundbar 600 is a great default option for anyone that's looking for a soundbar for their bedroom or for their small or medium sized living room because this soundbar gets decently loud, it has a decent amount of bass all on its own so you can feel what's happening on the screen. And thanks to its speaker setup, the soundbar has a really good instrument separation and it also has true Dolby Atmos support. However, if you want more sound and if you want more bass, then you can always go for the Bose Smart Ultra Soundbar. It gets louder, it has a more bass, and it has a fuller sounding center channel. Now, the main critiques that I have about the Bose Smart Ultra Soundbar, besides its really dumb name, personally, I don't like the glass top on the soundbar because in certain setups, it can cause a reflection, which I do feel can be very distracting. And also, I do feel that its AI feature is overhyped. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, they'll be linked down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only slap my name on something if I'm really proud of it.